You say that what the media do uh, is to ignore certain kinds of atrocities that are committed by us and our friends, mm -hmm. and to play up enormously atrocities that are that are uh, committed by them and, and, and our enemies. Um, and, and you posit, in fact, you say in the Massey Lectures that there's a test of integrity and moral honesty, which is to to have a kind of equality of treatment of corpses. Equality that, of principles. Uh, I mean, that every dead person should be in principle equal to what every other dead person. That's not what I say at all. Well, well I'm glad that's not what you say, because, because fact, I, that's yeah. not what you do. Of course it's not what I do, nor would I say it. I mean, right. In fact, I say the opposite. What I say is that we should be responsible for our own actions primarily. That's something quite but, different. But it isn't, but it isn't, but Polish with, with 100 yeah. uh, priests. I wasn't equating them, I was comparing the treatment of them. In my, if you want my value judgment, we should give much more attention to one priest who we've killed than to a hundred priests that they've killed. Notice that this is exactly the... Your method. That's exactly my method. Because your method is to ignore, uh, is not, not so much to, not only to ignore cor the corpses created by them, but also to ignore the corpses that are created by neither side, but which are irrelevant to your ideological... That's yeah. totally untrue. Well, well let, let me give you an example. Um, that uh, that um, one of your one of your own causes that you take very seriously is the cause of the Palestinians, and, and a Palestinian corpse weighs, weighs very heavily on your conscience. And yet a Kurdish corpse does not. That's not um, true at all. Uh, I've been involved in Kurdish support groups for years. Um, uh, a, that's absolutely true. It's absolutely false. I mean, just ask the Kurdish, ask the people who are involved in. I mean, you know, they come to me. I sign their petitions and so on and so forth. And, in and fact, if you look at the stuff, at the things we've written, I and mean, take, take, take a look. I mean, I'm not Amnesty International. I can't do everything. I'm a single university person. But if you read, say, uh, take take a look, say at. Uh, uh, at, at the book that Edward Herman and I wrote on this topic. We wrote a book about this in 1979. In it, we dis discuss three kinds of atrocities, not two, three kinds of bloodbaths. What we call benign bloodbaths, which nobody cares about, constructive bloodbaths, which are the ones we like, and nefarious bloodbaths, which are the ones that the bad guys do. Constructive bloodbaths are things like the Indonesian massacres, which we supported. Uh, nefarious bloodbaths are like Pol Pot. But we also discussed ones that nobody cares about, like Burundi. For example, we have probably the only discussion in the literature, I guess, of the massacres that were going on in Burundi at that time. Uh, we probably have the only discussion in the literature, at least that I know of, of uh, the uh, massacres that were going on in Burma. Hmm? Well, you know, uh, in fact, not only is what you say not true, but it's the opposite of the truth. We went out of our way to find the kinds of bloodbaths that are just ignored because nobody cares about them. Now again, let me stress, I'm not Amnesty International. I do not have the, uh, either the, uh, I don't have, uh, the, you know, the ludicrous egotism which makes me the uh, arbiter of uh, uh, all atrocities over the world, right? I'm not trying to give an A to this country and a B minus to this country and so on. The principle that I think we ought to follow is not the one that you stated. It's the principle that we rightly expect Soviet dissidents to follow. So what principle do we expect Sakharov to follow, let's say? What lets us decide whether Sakharov's a moral person? I think he is. Uh, Sakharov does not treat every corpse as a, it does not treat every atrocity as identical. He has nothing to say about American atrocities. And when he's asked, he says, I don't know anything about them, I don't care about them. What he talks about is Soviet atrocities. And that's right, because those are the ones that he's responsible for. Uh, his, just, just as in, you know, it's, it's a very simple ethical point. You're responsible for the predictable consequences of your actions. You're not responsible for the predictable consequences of somebody else's actions. Now, we understand this when we're talking about dissidents in the Soviet Union, okay? But we refuse to understand it when we're talking about ourselves for very good reasons. Commissars in the Soviet Union don't understand it about dissidents. Commissars in the Soviet Union attack Sakharov and other dissidents because they don't talk about American crimes. Right? We understand exactly why that's just hypocrisy and cynicism when they do it. And we should understand the same when we do it. Now, the fact of the matter is that I spend a fair amount of effort on crimes of official enemies. There are a fair number of people in the United States and Canada uh, from the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe who are there because of my personal activities on their behalf. But I don't take any pride in that particularly. I just do it because I'm interested in it. The most important thing uh, for me and for you is to think about the consequences of your actions. What can you affect? Those are the ones you primarily ought to be concerned about. Of course, every corpse is a corpse, but there's some that you can affect and there are others you can't do much about.
Now, like I can be worried about things that happened in the 18th century, but I can't do much about them. 